Yeah, yeah. No, karma is a bitch. That's it. Only if you are. That's right. <laughs> karma is a blessing if you are. That's beautiful. That's a great way of saying it. All right, Billy and Valerie. <laughs> Billy and Valerie, where are you guys from? Texas, Bernie. Well, I, I'm from Bernie, Texas. That's where I grew up and graduated. He's from all over the place. No, I grew up in Bernie. <laughs> yeah, I've known her since she was six years old. Six years old? Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. I was six. He was seven. Small town. Small town. What was, your, uh, what was your family's, what were your families like? <laughs> where should we start? Catholics, both of us. Let's see. Okay. My dad was a truck driver. And my dad was too. My mom was a uh, Avon uh, home interior, Tupperware, you know, uh, all that and social butterfly. Everybody in town knew her and loved her. Uh, she was a majorette in high school, you know. But she uh, she got cancer when I was young, so mm. I kind of put a damper on things. My brothers, one of them lived with my grandmother. My oldest brother did, so he didn't live at home. My middle brother, he got all the shit. He had the trash detail, doing the dishes. I was spoiled rotten. You were spoiled. Oh, the yeah. middle one was spoiled. <laughs> No, well, you. I was spoiled. Right. He was the baby, so he got everything yeah. he wanted. I was the oldest one. I was a latchkey kid. I got nothing. I, I I was left to raise my sister. I was eight. She was five, with a latchkey because my mom was was a nurse and we had to stay home alone. My dad was a truck driver too. In fact, come years later to find out, my aunt was married to his uncle. So. We're that related by marriage. <laughs> that explains why my mom said, "Stay away from that biker bunch." Yeah, my whole family rode motorcycles, so. Mm. But we never saw each other at any family gatherings or anything like that, which was kind of weird, but my mom had a hand in keeping us apart. <laughs> Bernie, it's a Texas hill country right outside of San Antonio. Okay. Key to the hills is what it's called. I mean, it's right when you come into the hills and all of it's open. A little German town, you know. <laughs> Speaking Predominantly German. What kind of kids were you guys in high school? You went, did you do a high school together? Uh, yeah. I was very much not in school after the fifth grade. I was oh, yeah. homeschooled during the fifth grade. And then I went back to public school and I skipped the eighth grade altogether. They put me right into high school and I didn't stay because my mom was sick, you know, and my dad was still working at that time. So I spent a lot of time at home and I ended up quitting high school my freshman year. I graduated with a two week old baby I graduated a year late because my mom is, I emancipated myself at 16. I went to the judge of the town with the paperwork and I said, sign this for me. My mom won't quit fucking with me at school. I, I was a nerd, <laughs> I guess is what you would call it. Um, I was in every activity. I was the first female trainer in the state of Texas because Coach Brown went to bat for me in Austin saying that this girl's going to be it. Well, I'm... Um, like a natural healer. I know all the medical stuff. I helped my mom pass her test to become a nurse and all that shit stuck. So uh, where were we? Uh, back in Bernie. I graduated, like I said, a year late with a, a two week old there, but my mom was there, my aunt was there, everybody was there. And then I, I put myself straight into dental school and I was in school and managing a bar at night. And wow. this guy watched my baby. Her first born yet. My, my wife at the time was pregnant with my first daughter, but <laughs> I was babysitting her daughter. <laughs> yeah, because I had to nurse her, and the only time I could nurse her is, you know, I'll go to school all day, my boobs get full, I come home and pick her up, I nurse her real quick, go to the bar, go work. My babysitter, she would bring her back and forth, I would nurse her right there at the bar mm -hmm. and, and work because I didn't drink, so it was easy for me to do, and that's what I did while I went through school. Even though I didn't graduate, <laughs> I did 10 months or eight months out of 10 for dental hygienist. Is that when you guys became a couple? No. After she left her <laughs> mom, uh, we, we, we were closer friends then, but uh, we weren't as, like as a couple at all. We haven't been We a were couple. just best friends. <laughs> we both have three marriages each. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So yeah. we and just you, stayed you in touch You guys are not married now? No. No, we just stayed in touch over the years. And How long have you been traveling together? <laughs> Four years now. 2018 after Hurricane Harvey is when, well, I got clean on the April 25th of 2018. Okay, so that was Almost when I... Five years, I guess. It was five years in April, yeah, um, that I've been clean of the needle. So 
I came to him down in Corpus Christi. He was working there after the hurricane. I told him if he ever came back to Texas and was single, I was coming to him right away. So I did. I even hitchhiked out of Houston while my husband was displaced at another house. My whole family got separated after Harvey. And uh, I hitchhiked out of Houston. I sat outside of Joel Osteen's church crying for a long time, figuring out how I was going to get to him because he, he couldn't get me there. I'm on I-35. I'm going. I don't care. From county to county, I got cops to get me from one county to the next because they didn't want me in their county. You know, just sitting on the side of the road with my bags. <laughs> I finally bought her a ticket halfway there. <laughs> and I got a bus out of a town that didn't have a name or a bus stop. It, it was kind of scary for me because I was coming off of drugs and I thought everybody was the enemy. But when did drugs become a part of your lives? Mine or his? Both. I was 11 when I got high on hash the first time with my brothers. I got two older brothers, remember, so one's six years older and one's eight years older. And uh, so I was introduced <laughs> when I was 11 years old. I started smoking hash and weed. And Valerie? Um, I started smoking weed. Um, I was like 11 babysitting in Houston. And my baby, the one that lady I was babysitting for, she rolled me up some big fatties and that's when I started smoking. And so the drug, drugs have always been a part of your stories? Sure, man. I mean, I love, I love the weed. I love, that's what I started with was the weed. And then my cousin, man, she was like, you got to try this. And she was uh, one year older than me. I think I was 12 and I got my first shot, but it was horrible because I didn't like the way it made me feel. It was speed. I, I had no idea what was going on. I got sick. I threw up. I didn't touch it again until I was like 16. And my brother told me he, <laughs> I said, I said, uh, Damn, it's like you soar with the eagles. He said, yeah, you fly with the turkeys, just stay that way. Well, that made me want it even more. So by the time I was uh, going to school, I did my first shot by myself in a parking lot because I had to stay awake, I had things to do. I quit nursing the baby because of it and everything. I, I kept it to myself, I lied to everybody about it. So that's when I started doing it, like I hardcore. I never liked to be... Uh... <laughs> And this is way back when it was like real methamphetamine, you know, not this ice shit that they got now. But uh, I, I never really cared for it too much because it made me that stupid, you know, really. And it just wasn't for me. I couldn't stay up for days, you know, and be, be all right. So <laughs> what, I started, what are you guys using now? I started doing crack when I was 14. Crack? It was free yeah. base back then, back in 84. So uh, my oldest brother introduced me to that. And I was, I loved it. How has the quality of crack changed over the years? <sighs> <laughs> I haven't done it that long, so you don't have to ask me. Yeah, I, I would have to see. you gotta be real careful where you get it, who you get it from, because they put a lot of extra shit in it now. You never know what you're gonna get. Have you OD'd from fentanyl? Oh, absolutely not. We, because we, fentanyl looks like crack. Uh, and that's what, that's what kills a lot of the-, the Well, crack. we haven't been here in three years. I, like I say again, I'm real careful where I get that shit from. And or are you are you how long you been in Skid Row? This is not my first time being down here. No, but really. like like this time, how many, how long have you been here? I've only been back for like a week and a half. Okay, you'll yeah, be careful now because I, I, we have heard a lot. Now of there's stuff. this drug called fentanyl. All my that, friends are telling me people are slipping that shit to, to other people. Some yeah, or, of my or, friends or the dealer died. just confuses it. Some of my friends have died. I've right. seen dealers who people. who OD because they don't realize that. The, right. the supply that they're using is not... It's a very terrible correct. drug. I may, mean... May I get my drink? Sure. It's a terrible thing, you know. And yeah, I would, I would never play with it personally. Here. I would never play with it. And I'm very careful. It, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's why there's a lot of people that are no longer with us because of that. We have noticed. Uh, yeah. It's... Uh, Where are you guys staying now? Here, there, and yonder. I don't have a permanent place. We're just crashing wherever. This weather's is nice now. <laughs> this is so much more beautiful than Texas. I was going to die in Texas. Yeah. I hate it there. See, our kids are there, so we go back here quite often to see it. Uh, What's your relationship like with your kids? <laughs> I have a really, actually, a good relationship with my kids. Uh, I wasn't really there for them when they were growing up. Uh, after they were like nine and, and 11, uh, I divorced their mom, I left them. And uh, I didn't see them again until they were 17, 18. So it was like seven, eight years 
gap actually and uh, I was in rehab when I got back in touch with them and ever since then we've been really cool you know I mean they know everything about me I didn't lie to them you know I told them why I left you know and uh, they accepted it and I lied to mine the whole way. They, they call me. Sure. They call me at least once a week. If my oldest son actually calls me probably twice a week. Uh, <laughs> so are you guys a romantic couple or just friends? We became romantic. Yeah, my husband passed away, and I was having a hard time like being totally for him because I was married, you know. And uh, my husband passed away, and since then we've gotten. <sighs> I've only recently became able to trust this guy because I didn't trust anybody. Yeah. She had a lot of baggage from her past relationships. They weren't always pleasant for her, and she was just kind of seeing me in the light. same light. Well, he has the same name as my second husband, who abused me, and very, he was very. Wow. Whew, he, he wouldn't even let me go to my mom's house without when I came back pulling down my pants to smell me. Yeah, he was very twisted. He was a twisted fucker. He 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 fucked me up here, and even though my husband for twenty years, like tried to get me where I wasn't fucked up. When I wasn't around Alan anymore, and, and his name's Billy Joe, his name is Billy Jack, I did. I looked at him in the same foul fucking way. It was hard the first couple of years we were together, you know, getting past that, you know, her, her damage. Uh, but luckily, we've known each other long enough where she can trust me now. Yeah, you're nothing without <laughs> luck. The luck is the result of hard work. It's because we're blessed. But, uh, Truly blessed. Yeah, we are, we are definitely very close now, probably more, more so than most couples. The only reason we had to come across that desert again is because like, I didn't listen to God and I didn't listen to him. And I promised on my way to him that I would. I promised God I would listen to him and I did anything but. I bucked the system the whole time because I'm a Taurus and I have a hard head. And a hard head makes for a soft ass. Yeah, well, so we started out with nothing and we, we, we kind of got where we we're half ass all right. And then <laughs> we kind of went back down. So we're starting over again. <laughs> you know, at, least, at, least, at least I've done this before here. So I know, you you know, know the, the steps to take, you yeah. know. It's just, just be aware of that fentanyl. For uh, 10 years, I'm, I thought I'm he scared was dead. of it because, I mean, it seems like is there's some kind of genocide going on here. You know? No, when the person selling it to you will say, no, no, it doesn't have any fentanyl in it. And well, I'm just saying. Next thing you know. It's, it's terrible. A lot of people, people are disappearing. And, uh, We've seen so many people gone. I am very aware of the fentanyl shit, and I do not take any chances at all. We're not taking anything that's open from anybody. I would never use drink. anybody else's, like, pipe. And I, I Cigarettes. Ain't take mm -mm. Nothing like that. Cause I don't trust it. How do you guys uh, support yourself? Hustle. Uh, <laughs> I salvage and recycle. Hmm. Yeah, at the college. You know, we make college and, and like warehouses and clothing manufacturers, they throw out a lot of extra material, trim and stuff. And I go and sell it to the retailers down here and for below wholesale. But you guys are honest? Yes. Absolutely. A hundred percent. That's why, you know what, when That's I came to him. That's why I get my blessings, you know. I mean, I found $2,300 cash in the dumpster. We're um, we don't why do should I steal, shit. you know? Uh, God provides, or whatever you can say provides. If people with excess, excess, access, excess to access, access to excess. This is what I tell him. You know, uh, this is the city of lost angels, and I'll tell you what: people throw away perfectly good items all the time. I find better stuff than I could steal, probably. You know? <laughs> Honestly, I, I do. I do we quite well. You know, they they there. give away clothes at the emissions here. Yeah, that, but we that you can better. sell to a resale shop and, and make so We get money. better stuff at the college. These man. are brand new 501s I got on iPhone yesterday. I got two pairs of them. I, mean, I just haven't had a shower. That's why I'm in my clothes right here because once we get a shower, I've got my good clothes in that bag. <laughs> yeah, we find very nice stuff. Do you guys get hotels for yourselves every once in a while? Uh, <laughs> three, three, four days. Yeah, we'll get one, you know, three or four days. You know, try to put back some money. Then we just weigh it out. Is it worth getting a hotel room? Or you know, because right now we're trying to get another vehicle, so yeah. we're like, we're trying to mash it and get some money together because we have mission. We have God's taken us where He wants to. Yeah, I need I need a vehicle. I make better money when I have one. We can actually stay inside the vehicle, you know. So it just it's that's, that's our first goal, our step up to get off the, off the street. Where would you guys like to be in five years? Huh? <laughs> it's leveled you up. Want a, you want an honest <laughs> answer to that? In he five years, uh, 
I want to be a counselor, uh, not just a drug and alcohol counselor, but a spiritual counselor. You know, it, it's probably going to coincide with each other. Uh, Better coincide with getting off crack cocaine, too. Correct. Well, well oh. I've done my intern hours already when I was in rehab. So I just, I'm registered with CAR. They got that on record. I just need my classroom hours now. And crack. He said he could take it or leave it. I can leave it. I can it all take the time. it or leave it. I really can <laughs> at this point in my life. Uh, I use more now than. Why are I, you taking it then? Well, because it's Pain. medicinal. I mean, on the street, you know, it, it really is. I'm old and I have to hustle hard. How old are you? I'm 53. You're 53? And I ride 30 miles a day and jump in and out of dumpsters and it's hard. It's it's hard on the body. And you get... Are you guys the, the black sheeps of your family? Both um, of us are. I am for sure. Your whole family's black sheep. If, <laughs> if, if you ask, if you ask my brothers, yes. But if you ask my, my parents, uh, no, I was, I was a spoiled one. I mean, they loved me. They gave me everything I wanted. Uh, when, when, I my, when my mom died, uh, I inherited everything. And then my first wife took it from me. Uh, her, cousin, her cousin set me up on a drug deal, and she got everything. So. What, what would you guys have done differently if you had another chance? I, would I wouldn't have do anything. I with her earlier. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> we spoke on that. However, you know... I can't do anything differently, otherwise I wouldn't be where I am today. And I just have to thank God for all the good and the bad and the other. Because, you know, I, I, my two youngest kids, they don't talk to me. They don't talk to me at all. My oldest one, bless her heart, she's on her way here, <laughs> come hell or high water, because that's my, she's my oh, little God. sister. She's not my daughter, she's my little sister. I treated her like a friend and I should have, but I can't change yesterday, you know. Are, are drugs part of her life? Yes. And she's trying to leave it on the way across the country because she knows I won't. I, I, to, I the, met, to the fentanyl capital of the country. Well, see, <laughs> we, we don't have, we haven't had any problems. I don't think it's problems. the fentanyl capital. No, Phoenix maybe it could be, could be Philly or San Francisco. Phoenix is by far worse. I think the whole country is. Phoenix was uh, freaky. Got the same problem. Phoenix it's, was freaky, yeah. It's bad there. It's the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just when you're here, you feel like it's the capital, but you go to San Francisco, and you're like, oh, no, that's the capital. Right, you go right, to Philly, right. You go, oh, it's no, a matter it's... of perception. Yeah, it really, it it's, is. it's, it's just going like, on everywhere. Look, both my parents killed themselves, and it was about a year and a few months apart. Well, my dad was a cutter. I didn't even know what that was. My daughter is a cutter. Now I know. Okay, so um, my, my mom, she shot herself as soon as she saw my dad, but I told her I, I was going to drag her Catholic ass through the mud for taking my kid and she she deceived me by taking permanent custody of her when it was supposed to be six months temporary i was in a bible thumping church and i'll tell you what i was clean i was ready to take my kid and i threatened her and i said i'll drag your ass through the mud through the streets of bernie and i will tell everybody what the fuck you really are you know when she shot herself the next day so for 20 years i blamed myself but i just got that off of my back and off my chest because this guy made me make it through every holiday without diving into the fucking drugs and, and sorrow, you know what I mean? And when I made it through one year, I knew I could make it through two, but not without him because uh, he's my strength. He's my, my post that I lean on, you know? And uh, my father, he, he did it. I didn't even know that man. I met him and he's, uh, <laughs> he had told me his whole, my whole life that he was gonna bring me to Michigan and never fucking happened. So I called him Tom, not dad. He was not a dad to me. My dad was the one that died. And so, uh, yeah, after he left and went back, he told me while he was here, he said, you know, the best time to see Michigan is in June. And I was like, like I'm ever going to be there in June. Ha ha. He shot himself in June. So I was there for a whole month and I enjoyed learning and meeting my siblings and stuff. And it's not a situation that'll make or break you. It's how you handle the situation. Because my sister, we both have the same thing. Both of our parents shot themselves, right? The difference is I went to baseball and dance. I had a national champion dancer and the number two pitcher in the state of Texas when he was 13 because my husband kept me focused. You know, we didn't lose the kids. Um, my sister, she lost all six of her fucking kids. She went to prison three times. She just died last year. All the women in my family are dead by their 46, 47. I'm 52 because there's a big plan set up for me. We're, I don't even know what We've both been functioning addicts quite often in our lives, you know. Would, I would, you, would you consider yourself both functional? Uh, Absolutely. 
Yeah, we have a lot of willpower and a lot of, you know, drive. It's just... Well, a crack is a drug where you can almost be functional if you can If keep, you, if right. it's a mind over matter. If you can keep from just becoming a... If you can right. keep from selling your grandma for it. Well, yeah, it... Because it, it, it's... it's you, you, have to, you stay pretty sharp on it. I've, I've seen crack addicts who are pretty together. Yeah. I, I've been now. functional yeah. addict. Like yeah. I said, I started when I was 14 and I've, I've had a good life quite a few times. It's just, you know... Other other circumstances happen, maybe as a result of drug use. Or, you know, I'm not going to put that out of the picture. It does cause problems in my life sometimes, and I've <laughs> learned from it. So, I mean, but am I going to do it forever? No. You know, I, I can't see myself doing it forever. I'm, I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> I made just, him old. <laughs> it's it's just not funny. It, it's not really fun anymore. It's not feasible to do it. I just do it, like I said, medicinally, actually. You know, it's kind of like uh, How much do you spend a day? depends maybe 20 40 bucks that's it you know i mean i don't just chase it back to back you know i like it's, the weed it's not my purpose so. you know that's not my goal you know i'm not just <laughs> chasing, chasing to, to get a hit uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know trying to get money together i'd rather keep my money than spend it on that you know, right that, what, what are your what's your biggest fear now biggest fear <clears throat> I'm really, I don't have any fears. We try not to worry because that uh, makes you. You're, yeah, you're I, right, you know? I don't focus on fears. I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive you know, on life. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't fear anything because I don't deserve anything bad to happen to me. You know, I, I have that belief, you know, that you get what you put out there, you know. And, I, and we're not out there being harmful. We're out there sharing anything our to stories. deserve anything bad, so I don't think it'll come better. my way. You know, I think I'm divinely protected, so to speak, you know? I believe that. I believe Is it. Is it easier because you guys are a couple? Yes. Definitely. You deal with being homeless and all that? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm one of the only ones out here that doesn't do tricks. I didn't know that. When I came here, he, he told me, he was like, he was protecting me hardcore. I had no idea that every single one of them would turn a trick, that they would suck a dick or, or something else for, for drugs or money. Well, I have integrity, and people don't even know what that word is here. I have integrity. I, I, this, 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 ain't nobody getting in this because this is mine. You know what I mean? The only way they're going to get there is if they fight their way in, and uh, you better believe they're going to fight because <laughs> I'm a rodeo country girl, and I will fuck some shit up. I will ask him. I have fucked him up, and I love him. <laughs> <laughs> true, true story. And we went three blocks out, out here <laughs> one night. I mean, just rodeoing, and it's raining, and it's misting or whatever, and we're down the middle of a dark street, and I looked at him, and I said, you better turn around and kiss me. Tell him the rest. Oh, there was cops on every corner by then. I was like, they're behind me, aren't they? She's like, yes. I'm like, oh. I said, they're behind me. Aren't they? <laughs> he said, yes. Because, see, I, I've got assault on peace officers in Bernie. It never stuck. But uh, five of them rodeoed with me. Three of them quit because they were pressing charges, and the other two just disappeared. I don't know how it happened, but they went to go cut my cross off my neck, and I went stupid. I went just retarded, redneck rodeo retarded. And uh, by the time they got me in, I spent 40 days and 40 nights in a solitary cell in Kendall County. While I didn't eat a friggin', I didn't eat nothing the whole time. All I did was drink water. You know why? Because there was a purpose. There was, I had, to, I had to get some clarity. And I did, and I got out of there, and it took me two and a half years, three years, for them to drop those charges. But when I waited on the DA and I treated her like a human being, not like a person that was gonna throw me under the jail, they left me a huge tip, and like the next time I went to court, it was all gone, every bit of it. Every bit of it was gone. Without me having to snitch on anybody or anything, every bit of it was gone, because my boss told me, get out there and do your job. I did my job, I almost threw up a couple times at their table, but it was their anniversary, and I had to serve them well, because that's what I was there for, to serve them. So, so other than, than pot, you're smoking what? Damn. Me, right now? Nothing. Nothing. Just just pot. Pot. So, uh, well, I try to get off the cigarettes, and so I'm vaping a little bit. But every. Are you now, using crystal or anything like that? No, I don't. I don't mess around. <laughs> That's no. the devil's dust. We definitely don't don't do crystal. I mean, we have, but not anymore. Cause I it, did it for thirty years. I don't want that shit. I don't like it at all, and I've noticed 
that it's got extras in it too. I don't know what they're putting in that shit. Some some mental fucking shit or whatever. It's really fucks with your psyche. It makes your yeah, it makes, makes your this, brain go stupid. Makes makes you insane. And you you don't partake in Billy's crack. Oh yeah, I smoke a little crack. Oh, you do. Oh sure, I have a. I'm not supposed to be able to walk, okay? Because I have scoliosis both ways. I'm supposed to be in a wheelchair. They're not my god, you know what I mean? So I keep on going, but it's like we don't really smoke and get stupid like tweaking on the ground and stu- stuck on high, you know? Like I say, it's work. it's medicinal. I might just do a little bump and just keep pushing, you know? It's just more for energy. You know, and painkilling. You think you'll stay out here for a while? Uh, you think you'll stay in Los Angeles for a while? Until so God like, moves us. Yeah, you know, because there's resources here, you know, and I know people are here, and, and I, I, I'm I, waiting for the next right thing in my path. You know, if I see, I'm not, like, I take advantage of my opportunities, you know, that are presented to me. There's more opportunities here, you know. So if I see a workable thing to get me to a better quality of life, so to speak, or, or you know, better we situation, have goals, yeah. uh, I'm all for it, you know. I have to just be quiet and follow him. So that's, I'm just looking for the next step up, you know, the next workable thing. Uh, we do three things. We stay prayed up. We do the next right thing. And then everything else will follow. Man, when God tells us to move, we're up and we're gone. And he tells him first and he tells me, Get that. It's it's kind of uncanny sometimes. Because <laughs> when I'm out there salvaging and recycling, I'll just be riding and then all of a sudden uh, I'll have a feeling, so to speak, and I'll tell them, hey, we got to go check this dumpster. And sure enough, it's usually right there, what we need. We got we made $2,800 in three days a few years ago when we started saying 280 Yeah, 280. I thought it was going to be $280. I told them, I need $280 sometime this week. And uh, ended up the last day. Uh, I it was it, times ten. It, it was, you figure you need two hundred eighty bucks a day. No, no I said we that's needed it in needed, three days. You know, to make. It and, was going to be my phone bill, a couple of other know, things. And uh, it ended up being two thousand eight hundred dollars. Hmm. By the uh, third day, when he came back, I thought he robbed somebody, and I was mad as hell. He came back from selling the gold teeth. I had one hundred fifty dollars for a rug I sold, and when I woke up and I said, "How much did you get?" and he dropped this wad on the bed. My heart hit the floor and I said, who did you rob? Because we don't do shady shit at all. I'm, I'm all about karma. I'm not having it come back on me, right? Tell them the rest. Well, I just I looked in a dumpster that I go to quite often on my way back and uh, it was right on top in a plastic bag. There was nothing in it but a t-shirt. And I said, I can use a t-shirt. So I was feeling it and there was something inside of it. And I opened up the t-shirt. 2800 bucks, I mean 2100 bucks, just the rubber band around. He didn't know how much it was. He shoved it in his pocket, got on his bike, and rode yeah, away like he stole it. Because I didn't know if somebody threw that out there and was going to come looking for it, or if they threw it out there to come out there and get it later. You never know. I heard him sliding too to the tent, and I sat up doing like this, excited because we're going to maybe get a room and, and you know, get off the street for a day. <sighs> wow. That was cool. You think you'll be homeless for the rest of your life? Heck no. No. No? We're not homeless. We're just houseless. But, I mean, you think you'll be houseless for the rest of your life? No. What will what, what'll, what'll change that? Um, <laughs> well, I'm a pretty good carpenter. And, uh, <laughs> I, I really want to get a piece of property and just build my own home, you know. I live off the grid like I like to. I'm Mother Earth. I want to do everything from what is here. You know, I've got um, so many ideas. That's really what I'd like to do. What would you guys say is the most important lesson you've learned in your lives? Hmm. That I don't have to fix everybody, you know, even though I'd like to. You know, I don't have to make everybody see my point of view, you know. All I can do is just share share my reality with them and they can take it or leave it. You know, I don't have to hate people or dislike them because of their point of view, you know. And we can both be right. You know? <laughs> Sorry, that was just really tough. I came across the desert saying if this man didn't change, then nothing was going to change with us. And he, he. I used to be a real asshole <laughs> to other people. You know, I'm, I'm socially incorrect. You know, I don't believe in the government at all. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't trust any of that. Because so, it's designed to fail. 
And I believe in humanity. I believe everybody's got subject to, cha to change and have good in them. Well, I found out here in Los Angeles that I was really wrong. There's, there's, there's evil out there that's, that's never going to be able to change because it's not even human. And uh, I figured this out sitting in, in between three churches. For many, many hours, I sat there crocheting rugs. They called me the rug lady. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't listen to a man that was talking shit to people all the time. And it's just not the way I treat people. I treat people the way I want to be treated. And when he would get foul with them and shit, I would be like, ah. That's because I knew that they had, you know, preconceived expectations and, and, and uh, reasons why they were being nice to you. You know what I mean? So I treated them accordingly. It's like, you know. And I didn't see all that, you know what I mean? I, yeah, she said, well, they were nice people. I said, no, they weren't nice. That's nice you know, about it. Was, <laughs> I could read between the lines. Yeah, he's been out here so much longer than I. I, was, I sheltered my kids. I was sheltered. I was caught up in my life for 19 years with my husband, you know? And then when Alan died, man, he was my, he was my knight in shining armor. And then my Jody, my king, my everything. I call him Jody because that's a family name. Nobody calls him that anymore. Yeah, my mom used to call me that. So only, <laughs> only like, people that know me. She's like, if you don't call him me, Billy Joe, yeah. call him Jody. You had to know me before I was a teenager to know that name. <laughs> So most people, if and I try not to say that name out here because if somebody calls him that, I'm going to put him <laughs> up against a wall by the throat. You don't call him that. You don't know him like that. That's my guy. That's my name. Don't do that. He's Even his best friend. No. Uh, uh, quadpolar. <laughs> 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 That's a new one, quadpolar. But yeah, the, we've had some wild adventures across this country. It's just incredible. All right. Billy and Valerie, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thank you for getting it. Maybe my kids will see it. Realize I'm not that bad. <laughs> hmm. You're not. Thank you. Wish you all the luck in the world. Ha! Luck is the result of hard work. Right. We stay blessed.